PMT stands for photomultiplier tube. You can think of them as Snow Plus's eyes, and we have nearly 10,000 of them around the acrylic sphere. When a neutrino comes in and interacts with the fluid inside the acrylic sphere, it gives off light. We'll refer to light as a photon. This light is very dim, and we need a special instrument to detect it, and that's the job of the PMTs. PMTs are almost like the cameras from your cell phones, except they're way more sensitive. In fact, they can detect light from just a single photon. How dim is that? Is it this dim? What about this dim? Mmm, this actually isn't dim enough. What about this? Is this dim enough? Well, in fact, the night sky actually produces way more photons than what Snow Plus would see after a particle interaction. As a photon approaches the PMT, it first reaches the PMT's photocathode. This region has a metal surface that can convert photons into electrons. It's kind of like a solar cell. In science, the mechanism that converts light into electricity is called the photoelectric effect, where photo means photon, like light, and electric, well, isn't that obvious? You can think of the photoelectric effect kind of like a game of billiards. When a photon with a certain amount of energy hits the photocathode, it knocks some electrons loose off the metal surface. Imagine that this white ball is a photon and the balls that are neatly packed together are electrons on the metal plate. Oh, that won't do. Okay, that's better. As you can see, we need to shoot the white ball in the exact right way in order to hit the other balls loose. The photon needs to have the right amount of energy in order to knock the electrons loose off the metal plate. And that energy is directly related to the photon's frequency. I'd like you to take a wild guess as to what that's called. It's the photoelectric threshold frequency. As you can see, us physicists like our fancy terms. Our PMT's photocathodes can release electrons at a threshold frequency lower than that of photons released by a particle interaction. So now we have an electron but we still need to be able to generate a strong enough electric signal that our computer can record. And that is what the tube is for. Inside the tube is a vacuum. And there are dynodes. Dynodes are a kind of electrode. Sorry, another fancy physics term. Dynodes are held at a certain voltage. Voltage refers to the potential difference between any two points in a circuit. Increasing the voltage increases the strength of the electric field. That means the higher the voltage, the easier it is for electrons to get loose and move. Inside the PMT's tube, there are a series of dynodes. Each dynode is set to have a higher voltage than the one before it. As an electron is knocked out from the photocathode, it hits the first dynode. That stimulates the dynode to emit a few more electrons because of the voltage. And those few electrons will hit the next dynode at a higher voltage. And that makes the next dynode emit even more electrons. And so on and so forth. This chain reaction can leave us with a lot of electrons. Let's say there are 10 dynodes within the PMT that in itself can produce up to 10 million electrons. At the very end of the tube, there's an anode plate that collects all the electrons. That anode is connected to a wire that transmits an electric signal that is strong enough for us to record. Uh, uh, I messed up the line! A pho uh, the, the <laughs> Where photon... <laughs> all right, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's need to loosen up a little bit. Okay, all right. Come on, last line. The anode is connected to a wire that transmits electrical signal strong enough for us to record. Okay. It's the electrical signal strong of us for... Ah, strong of us. Strong of us. 
strong enough for us. Strong enough. 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 Strong enough for us to record. Strong enough for us to record. Strong enough for us to record.